You have the most blue eyes of anybody I know. ever. Look at that, it's like a cat. <laughs> Meditation <laughs> session here. I love milk. I do not care what anybody says. Uh, yeah. Beef little soup. <sighs> What's up, everybody? Ugh. Waking up. Fell asleep. With a whole bunch of books. Breakfast in the office, but before, we'll do a little cardio on the treadmill desk. Come on. Again, Herman working out in the gym. Show the. No, show the. Turn sideways? No, do the full. Show full? No. Dr. Soleil teaches. At UCLA, mindfulness, yoga, meditation, Herman's brain scientist. How do you feel right now after 45 minutes? Relaxed. Certain people here do not like milk. It's disgusting. It's not real cigarettes. Vape. Mod squad. Now I've heard all that, you know all that vape stuff they're saying is bad for you now. It's better than cigarettes and milk. Oh, it ain't better <laughs> than milk. Just got news uh, that my grandpa died. He's actually my step-grandpa, but still. But he, he was older, he's 99 as expected, but you know, life is short, use it. Amazing book, Brief History of Time. The Origin and Fate of the Universe. My grandpa just died today. I was kind of contemplating it and reading Stephen Hawking's book, A Brief History of Time. And uh, it was my step-grandpa, so, but he was pretty close to me. Um, he was older, he was 98, I think, um, so it was somewhat expected, uh, he lives in Ohio now, so I don't see him very often, but he is the grandpa in my story that I talk about, sent me those books when I asked him if he'd help me out, and, uh, one of the books he talked about was Stephen Hawking, and on this day, as I'm thinking about, you know, life and death, and, um, this chapter eight, this is the fate and origin of the universe. There is a time, and there is a time for me to seize the moment, and there's a time for me to remember, I better seize the moment even though the moment's not yet here. That's patiently waiting for the opportunity, and that's sometimes harder than seizing the moment. Because as Charlie Munger's grandfather told him, Charlie Munger listened to his grandfather. So it's a rare life that's bathed in opportunity all the way. Most people only get a few chances. So when you see an opportunity and you're sure, do it and don't do it small. Seize the moment when it's there, but realize it's not always there. Go easy on them. Uh-oh, baby. What? Oh, sorry, son. Now, there's a lot of people out there that said, Ty, humans are the only, ma'am, are the only uh, species that drinks milk past you know, infanthood. Joe Rogan has a funny bit on it. He goes, yeah, humans are the only, also the only ones who uh, come up with antibiotics, cars, electricity, ways to warm each other, ways to negotiate conflict without murdering each other, killing each other. So that's a weak argument. Also, by the way, all food, there's no food created for humans to eat. So like when you eat a grain like bread and wheat, you know what you're eating? the seed of a wheat plant that was supposed to make another uh, stalk of wheat. When you eat an apple, that is the fruit that bears the seed of future apple trees. So that argument is one of the worst freaking arguments on the planet. Getting a haircut down here in the basement. All right, do I look better now? Spike it up, put one hair like alfalfa. <laughs> no, don't do that. The basement, the basement's on the hunt. We got a situation, folks. What? Do a double and then turn around. She got a big back. Show the legs. She got that volleyball. She was a volleyball player. No wait. Well, you can't really see him. Leggings. Now give this the pose at the same time. Give it a down pose. Give it that. There you go. There you go. Muscles. She's not getting up, guys. I'm not getting up. So we're getting them wrapped so you don't hurt your hands. Herman doesn't know anything about wrapping, but you're learning. 
I, I know how to do gift wraps for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I always say people that want to fight a lot, I'm like, you should first go in the boxing ring for a little while. See what's like to get, like Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan. Oh yeah, here's what you do. Here's what you do. You spar, you put your head. He goes, everybody has a plan until I punch him in the face. That's what. <laughs> and when you get a Mike Tyson punch, all that strategy, you're kind of like, uh-oh. Beef soup with cabbage. I do not want, know why they spelled it little. I forgot the N. What? The actual argument is what do statistics bear up in terms of countries that do drink milk and don't drink milk? And I do think, just to be clear, that some people are allergic to dairy, some people don't feel good, and then you shouldn't drink it, you experiment. But the countries where people drink milk, like the Netherlands, is one, and Sweden and Norway, go to Sweden and Norway. Tell me if they look sickly. It's one of the healthiest looking places. Now go to countries where they don't drink much milk, but people are, who would you rather look like? I'm not gonna name any countries, but everywhere, even in Africa, the Maasai Indian tribe, uh, the Maasai African tribe, uh, those are the ones, the biggest, strongest tribe throughout the last couple centuries and beyond. They were nomads, so they drank milk and meat and the blood of cows. So there's so much weak arguments when it comes to food. I'm not saying I have all the answers, but I'm also saying you're not gonna give me some bullshit answer like, oh, just because it wasn't designed. Nothing was designed to be eaten. You vegetarians, a leaf of a lettuce plant is made to photosynthesize the sun so that the lettuce can grow and reproduce. You're not, it was, you think it was built for you to eat? Like, God, logic in the world is so weak. Look at statistics. Try it. Arnold Schwarzenegger drank milk a lot. He was Austrian. Last I checked, he seemed to look okay. And then all the people that tell me not to drink milk, I look at their body, I'm like, ah, oh, proof's in the pudding, buddy. So everything without going to excess is probably the right answer. Humans are omnivores. Drink a little milk, don't go nuts. You know, and obviously make sure it's best if it's not homogenized and it's not pot pasteurized, if you know the source. If you don't know the source, you might want it to be pasteurized. When I live on the Amish farm, they all grow up. The first time I ever went to an Amish farm, <laughs> the Amish guy, they put out milk for cereal. And I was like, where did this milk come from? They're like, our own cow. And I go, is this healthy for me to drink? And he said, Ty, he was like 70 years old. He goes, I have 12 sons. Uh, you want to meet them? They were all big, strong farm guys. And I was like, okay, that's good enough for me. And I drank the milk. And uh, there's this diet for those of you who are too skinny. I think they call it the PAG diet or PEG, something like that, where you just drink a gallon of milk. So instead of closed mindedness, Miss Cat, mm -mm. I'm going to get you. She just doesn't like milk because one time she drank rotten milk. That's not a good experience. <laughs> All right. Just my two cents. I'm sure I'll get a lot of flack. Anytime you have any opinion on anything, people are gonna pop out. I'm like, no. Absolutely. Have you done some of the, seen some of the science? Absolutely. What's the main part of the brain that it changes? It, it actually, um, we were talking about this. It's the, the prefrontal cortex, the one that's okay. in, in the front, and we'll leave. Our doctor talk more about that one. Um, and, what, yeah. And what does it do? Slow that down? What it's, it's, it's actually shown when, when there's a, a PET scan, you know, mm -hmm. and it's showing to, to activate when someone is doing meditation. Oh. And, and it's, it brings the self-awareness, the capacity to control emotions okay. that are in the lowest uh, to other brains. If you're facing fear, this part of the brain gets less activity right. and your right. reptilian brain gets high activity. Yeah. And your emotional centers, obviously. And your amygdala and stuff like that but, turns on. But yeah. if you meditate a lot and you train, it activates right. the exactly. more human parts of our brain. Actually, see, what Sammy was saying, in the, in, he's a boxer that trains us, and he, he says, you know, you have to be more animalistic when you fight. You have to not think. Yeah. Because like, if you're like, if you're boxing and someone throws a blow, you, you won't be quick enough to logically get out of the way. So he's like, you have to revert to just by your gut feeling. But like meditation is like the more human part and boxing is the more, or jujitsu is like more animalistic.
Presto making me feel bad, <laughs> and Herman making me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> All right, Herman, make a muscle. Yeah, Begin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, just finished today. What'd we do? Today we did push ups, we did tricep push downs, bicep curls, lateral shoulder raises, and planks for the core. Make sure you stretch, man. It's your first rule of jujitsu. He who is most limber oftentimes will win a fight. All right, so we're going to do 10 push ups. Let's rock and roll. Push. Boom. So you got 10 seconds between. Give me five. Give me five. Go. Boom. Oh, and we get out. We need a cable machine. We just got bands right here for these bands you can get for 10, 20 bucks. Get that tries. Now you said presto. What should people be able to hold eventually? Not right away. At least your full body weight right on top of you. So if I should stand on him, yeah, he should be all right. I now. believe Herman might collapse in that situation. <laughs> All right, guys, knock it out seven minutes. And then if you're tough, go to 14, then 21. Incremental development. That's what Jeff Bezos says. That's how he built Amazon and Blue Origin. It's not how much you can do in one day. It's how many days you can do it. I'm getting ready to spar with an Olympic boxer. I'm getting ready to get beat up, but we're just light, light going. You gotta be straight, make good, there you go. Guys, don't go doing this. Okay. You get hit. Your hand okay. follow it. Your hand follow your face. Your face don't go out and your hand go one way. Okay. Everything goes together. That way you don't get hit. Okay. Like say, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Yeah. When I'm punching, all you're doing is just like punch me, punch at me. There. Yeah. There. Yeah. There. There. But my, I, I'm not following you down. I'm just yeah. boom, boom. It's a little stop. There. Yeah. Just, just knock the momentum. You, you try to go somewhere else. I, there. Nice. Knock it. There. There. No, uh, boom, boom. Yeah. There. Yeah. Good. And bring your hands back. Very good. From that position, you can conquer the deck. Yeah. Good. You, you do it again? You see that? Uh, yeah. Am I too close? No, no, not too close. But where your hand, where I guide your hand. Okay. When, when, I, when I went here, you are open. Right so you're going to knock me out. All, all I had to do, just follow my punch. Yeah. You come in, there, boom. So, so, so what do I need so to so do? So when you jab, it's there. So if you try to knock my hand down, no, yeah. like, like what I did to you, like, like yeah. try to hook you. Yeah. Yeah. Try to hook my hand. Now, when yeah. you, once you do that, I'm gonna go right. Okay. You're gonna, you're gonna roll your hand around. Okay. Because my momentum is, is on this pulling it down. Yeah. Or you go your right. No, don't pull it back. Just roll it, roll it around. Psst. Boom. That's a punch. Okay. So. Psst. Boom. Psst. Right there. Good. Really good. Psst. Again. Psst. Psst. Good. That's it. Psst. 